if they sprout in between the rows of trees, I'm going to eliminate them because it just makes things a lot messier if I allow trees to grow wherever they want. I need to have things organized so that I can manage you know, in an efficient manner. Forget about sustainability. You want to enrich ecosystems. Every bean is equipped to live a positive energetic balance. Keep it pruned. We are cultivating abundance. Not a problem to cut down trees. The problem is not planting them. What is up Agroforcia Academy tribe? Welcome to the Agroforcia Academy channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about soil preparation and some important things to consider. I'm preparing this area here. We're going to have the 12th course here in the farm, Reservado Cajuzeira, in Lençóis, Bahia. And I'm getting things ready to, to roll. So we're already cleaning up the area, organizing organic matter, bringing some inputs here. I've got some lime, lots of wood shavings, bags, a bucket load of prickly pear, and also some, some pineapple slits. I've got some pretty good ones. These are the premium big ones, but then I got some smaller ones in this bag. We're gonna be planting a whole lot of them here. Um, so to give you a bit of, a, of an idea of the situation I'm working with, I start from that vegetation over there. I'm gonna, I've, I've done many videos about, about this type of vegetation and how it's completely degraded, but I'm gonna give you another close look to it some people might think it's good uh, at least the soil is well covered you can see that there's lots of leaves because the main species that grow here which is Kambuata, it's from the genus Cupania in the Sapindasi family it loses lots of leaves during winter so anyway we get decent organic matter in the soil but you can see that it's a vegetation that has lots of vines, a bunch of dead branches. The trees are not doing so well. So the first thing I have to do is to come and cut back all the vegetation. And first we just use a scythe and then and also a machete or a chainsaw to take down the, the trees that are growing. You can see that they're all very in, in terrible shape. Bunch of dead logs. Uh, one tree is sprouting from like five, six, seven different different places. You can see that the trunks are damaged. So it's a, not such a great idea to, to leave them be. I want them to re-sprout healthily. So the first thing I do is to kind of to clean up things a bit and I start organizing the organic material. This is an important point. You want to categorize organic matter because you're gonna use each type of organic matter differently. So here I've got a, a bunch of pricks, which I do not want to use because these are very dangerous pricks and I really don't want them in the agroforestry. So I just, I, I, I pile them up and I leave them be forever until they decompose. I might plant some black velvet beans around it so that the black velvet beans help decompose as they climb through it. Then I've got larger logs here and um, small branches, twigs and vines here. We try to chop them up as best as we can with a machete and with a scythe and then the thinner material, the leaves, the small branches, they are the last thing I'm going to take off from the soil because I don't want to clean things up and leave the soil bare for too long a time uh, until I prepare and plant. So I, I try to leave the soil as covered as possible. So I take out the more... Uh, grotesque and thick material and the thin one which is this kind of stuff which is easy to deal with you know just the leaves and very thin branches 
I just scraped them off the soil right before planting. So that's what I was doing today. Uh, since we're going to start preparing the soil tomorrow. And we're going to start planting the day after tomorrow. Because it's when this, the course begins. So I just started piling pi them up here. And I allowed a few... Uh, trees around which should be pruned you can see that they're all covered in vines they will be pruned of course otherwise they're going to have a terrible influence here there are some other back here but i'm giving my shell myself a bit of shade during the soil preparation so i want to take out the shade uh, i'm going to take a while to take out the shade because so that i can work a bit in the shade and then i i can uh, prune them uh, after I'd, I've done most of the work and these trees here in the middle I've experimented with a lot of stuff I have been for a while uh, pruning them and leaving like a, a, the log up to like 80 centimeters high or something like that but I decided I'm not going to do that anymore I'm just going to cut them back close to the soil and allow them to give me a strong re-sprout from the base instead of uh, having them re-sprout here. So one thing that I'm going to be doing tomorrow is coming with a chainsaw and just really taking all of them out close to the soil. And then I'm going to um, allow them to re-sprout and adopt the strongest and most vigorous sprouts that sprout align with my rows of trees if they sprout in between the rows of trees i'm going to eliminate them because it just makes things a lot messier if i allow trees to grow wherever they want i need to have things organized so that i can manage you know in an efficient manner so once the soil is clean and bare i'm going to distribute lime and and um manure these are the only inputs that i am incorporating in the soil i use some of uh, some sources of phosphate phosphate mainly bone meal and thermophosphate but these i do not incorporate in the soil because when you incorporate phosphorus in acidic soils the soil takes up a lot of this phosphorus and it it is not available to the plants it's like the soil is competing with the plant for the phosphorus so what i am going to do is i'm going to distribute phosphorus in the furrow where i'm going to plant to minimize the interaction between phosphorus and the soil but the lime will be incorporated. The amount that I have to use here is about five tons and a half per hectare of this specific lime. Of course, the amount you use is dependent on your soil, on the type of lime, lime that you're using and the, 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 your main crop. So this one, it was calculated, it's 5.5 tons per hectare to be incorporated in a layer of 30 centimeters which is what the, my rototiller does this is actually it's not sold as lime this is a marble powder which is leftovers from a from marble extracting company which i found in a place where i where i do some consultancy so i managed to bring a a load of this for free and then I sent it to the lab to analyze it to know exactly what I'm dealing with. And, and I found out it's pretty much lime with a uh, decent amount of magnesium. So it would be dolom dolomite lime. Dolomitic. I don't know how you guys call it in English. So I'm going to incorporate that with manure. I'm using about 110, 120 liters per 10 square meters. That means 100, but between 100 and 120 metric cubes, cubic meters uh, per hectare. Once they are incorporated and the soil is prepared with the rototiller, I'm going to align the rows of trees with a line. 
and open up the furrows to plant the pineapple, the the prickly pear. Then I take the opportunity already to cover a bit of the corridors with the the, the thicker organic matter because I'm, I'm I always use the thicker organic matter in the corridors, and then the the thinner organic matter and the, the 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 wood shavings to cover the bed themselves and then it's a matter of planting i'm gonna start planting the 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 pineapple i'm gonna plant the the, the prickly pear and then i'm gonna come in with the wood shavings and cover the remaining of the soil so these are the operations that you should do uh, they should be in this order so remember first you clean up uh, take out the, you know, don't don't pity the present vegetation if it's degraded. You know, clean it up. You you have to to clean it up to allow it to re-sprout and renew itself in a healthy way. And so once you clean up, organize the organic matter. Don't leave cutting the organic matter for later. As you prune the vegetation, already chop it up. Otherwise, if you allow the branches to dry out, it's going to be very hard for you to chop them up. If you have access to a wood chipper, of course, just take everything and transform it into wood chips. I would love to do that, but I don't have one here, so that's not possible for me. Leave the soil covered with the thin organic matter as much as you can. Uh, so only take that out right before uh, planting and soil preparation and then of course I'm going to take out all of these stumps because this is will be done tomorrow because I don't want my rototiller to be dealing with those otherwise it's going to be a bit of a of a mess for me as when it gets to these stumps the rototiller really jumps up and down and it, it can be extra kind of dangerous too you know I might get hurt and it's not as efficient as if the, the, the rototiller didn't have to go through these stumps. The big stumps that I left, since they're really big and thick, and I'm not going to take them out because it would be too much work, then these ones I can just go around with the rototiller. But the small ones in between, I'm just going to take them out uh, pretty easily. So anyway, these are the ideas. Uh, you know, the, the tips that I give you when you're about to prepare your soil, you try to follow uh, the order of things. It makes things a lot better. And I cannot stress enough, organize your organic matter in an intelligent way so that you use each type of organic matter in the best way possible. So we've got logs, you've got thick organic matter and then you've got thin organic matter logs and thick organic matter for the corridors thin organic matter for the beds remember that all right guys so that's uh, what i have for you today uh, i'll definitely be posting some updates on this on the development of this site and while i finish off with the last some last considerations i am going to walk to the the plot that was planted in the last course so if you're new to the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell. You know, that's the best way you can help this, this channel and support us in growing and spreading out the word of agroforestry. Um, check out our full agroforestry course. It's free. It's here in the channel. I'm going to put a card here to the first module. It's, uh, it's over five hours of, of content. And it will give you an insight into all of the principles and techniques of agroforestry. And if you want to take a step further, join us in our patient community. You can join us for $7.90. And you're going to get access to some extra material. You you get to participate in our monthly Q&As. So it's a, it's a good way to support the channel and to increase your agroforestry knowledge. So this is the area from the last course. Unfortunately, we only got one rain in the past five months, so we got about 50 millimeters of rain in five months. Uh, things suffered a bit, especially the banana plants. They're not doing so well, but the pigeon pea is growing nicely. The pineapple is uh, slightly dehydrated, but it's doing fine. And the prickly pear 
it's pretty well established. You can see the row of prickly pear here. So uh, this is the exact same model that we're going to do in the course. Rows of trees spaced apart at every four and 4.8 meters. Three rows of pineapple in between and one row of prickly pear in between each two rows of pineapple. All right, so I thank you for watching. And uh, I'm Felipe for the Agroforestry Academy and I'm signing out. Peace.